In this video, I'm going to be taking a deep dive into oud in perfumery. So I'm going to be covering what oud actually is, I'm going to be talking about the differences between both natural and synthetic oud, finally I'm going to be smelling and comparing both some real oud and some synthetic oud bases to see how they compare. So then, what is oud, also known as agarwood? Well, it comes from the Aquilaria agalocha tree, which is found in Southeast and South Asia. But it's not simply the oil from the tree itself, and that's because this tree has to become infected by a fungus. And once that happens, the tree, as part of its immune response, actually goes and forms this oleoresin, which is, just so happens to be, fragrant. And this is what is distilled into essential oil, which is known as oud oil. In the book Perfume and Flavor Materials of Natural Origin by Stefan Arctander, one of the go-to references for perfumery raw materials, um, agar oil is described as rich, sweet, woody, almost balsamic odor, not unlike that of vetiverol, something that's found in vetiver, or purified styrene-free styrax, and with a sweetness similar to that of sandalwood oil. So that gives you an idea to what this stuff actually smells like. It's a kind of woody, sweet, uh, incense-like smell with slight hints of uh, smokiness, a bit like vetiver, and kind of sweet, woody notes, a bit like sandalwood. Now, this book, which was written in the 60s, states that the agar oil actually is not used very widely and it's not produced that much for perfumery and that was the case back then but in recent decades it's enjoyed a surge in popularity and that's mostly due to the Arabic and Middle Eastern markets and there's been a lot of demand for oud based perfumes it's become quite a trendy thing and because of that it's also now been introduced into Western perfumery whereas like in the book it says before it just wasn't really there Despite that, it has been used traditionally as incense in the parts of the world where it's been grown for thousands of years. Now, the thing about oud is that it's not actually that easy to come by. Um, part of the reason is that there were never really that many of these trees in the wild which are actually infected with the fungus and therefore producing um, this oleoresin which could be distilled for its smell. So, like a lot of other perfumery raw materials, things like sandalwood, um, because you could get quite a high price for this on the market, it meant in the last century or so there was a lot of people just going into the forests, harvesting this stuff, and by doing so, kind of making the tree or the plant a little bit endangered. And what that means is these days there's not so much of this oud left to be harvested in the wild, although there is some in the wild that is still harvested. Because of that, and the fact that oud is now more popular and well known than it's ever been before in history across the world, the prices of this stuff can go pretty high. It can reach thousands of pounds per gram of oud oil. So in response to this, two things have happened. Major fragrance corporations have started making plantations where they actually grow these trees, infect them on purpose, and then methodically harvest the oud oil. And then aside from that, they've also started making synthetic oud bases, i.e. bases made by scientists which are designed to mimic the smell of oud as close as possible using mostly synthetic aroma chemicals, but also potentially other naturals that smell similar to oud, things like cypriol or maybe vetiver, and then they go and blend them together and try to make something as true as possible to the real oud. And while these don't usually do necessarily an absolute perfect job, there you can smell the difference, and that's just because these naturals, or the oud itself, is so complex that it's hard to mimic it exactly. There'll be molecules in there that we don't know how to produce, or maybe molecules that are important for the smell that are found actually in a very low concentration in the real oud oil, and therefore it's hard to even detect them or why they're important. But overall, we can make pretty decent synthetic bases, and because of that, most commercial perfumes with an oud note actually mostly just use these synthetic bases. And the real reason for that is it's just a lot cheaper than real oud oil, um, because if real oud oil was in most commercial perfumes at significant quantities, then they would have to be priced much, much higher than they are currently, probably 10 times or more the price. So in summary, there are three different types of oud. There is the synthetic oud, which is not really real oud, but it will give you an oud note inside your perfume, and this stuff is the cheapest out of all of them and it is the most consistent. So if you're looking for a smell that you know is always going to be the same, then these do a pretty good job because like all naturals in perfumery, depending on where they're grown, how they're harvested, that kind of thing, the smell can change from batch to batch. 
So next we have the commercially grown um, or more sustainably grown real oud. And this is of course a lot more expensive, but it does at least give you a real oud note. Then finally, there is the wild oud. Now, according to Ensar Oud, which is one brand selling these wild ouds, um, the wild oud is the best oud that you can get. And that's because usually it's been growing a lot longer in its kind of natural conditions. So you've had a lot more chance for the kind of resin to develop fully and the natural, uh, let's say terroir or the kind of surroundings or the natural environment, the habitat of the tree um, allows it to apparently develop more complex smells. Now obviously I don't know if this is true or they're just saying that to sell their stuff um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Now with the wild oud it's even more expensive because it's even rarer and you are potentially endangering these wild trees by using it um, but on the other hand apparently it gives you the best smell and another thing about it is it's probably going to give you the most variation in smell out of any of them, i.e. each tree being completely different. And that's just because if these trees are found in different habitats and they've undergone a different process to develop that mold and then that oleoresin, then you can imagine that the smell each one has developed is gonna be slightly different. Whereas with the commercially grown ouds, because they're all done in a plantation, all quite regimentally in big lines of trees using the same process for each one, you can imagine that there's probably gonna be less variability in the way that these trees um, have been made to create their oud and then consequently there's also going to be a little bit less variation in the actual smell of the oud oil itself. So then what does this oud actually smell like? Well I've got six different samples here. One is real oud and the other five are oud bases. So this real oud I've got here is actually from Perfumers World. Now I really don't know the quality level of this oud or if it was wild or from a plantation but the main thing is it is at least a reference point for real oud. And the reason I don't have a lot of real ouds of different types is simply because, well, it's just so expensive. Anyway, I've got these scent strips here, which I dipped in yesterday, and I took a note of how everything smelled yesterday when I dipped it, so the kind of top note impact. And then I'll also let you know how it smells now that it's had a chance to get or develop into the dry down. So the real oud oil, yesterday when I put it on the scent strip, it was actually very sweet, which is what surprised me. And it was this kind of sweet woody smell with hints of incense. And as it's dried down, what's happened is the sweetness has kind of gone and it's become a lot more leathery, I would say. I would almost describe it now as a leathery, slightly aromatic, slightly woody scent. It reminds me a little bit of Cipriol essential oil, which is actually something that they do blend quite a lot with oud. I think most of the time it's because it actually smells quite similar. So a good way to use less expensive oud in your perfumes is to use a little bit of real oud and then some Cipriol oil with it. Overall, it's an interesting smell, but I wouldn't say anything about it is particularly stunning on its own. I actually think a lot of the perception, at least based on this, of oud fragrances or oud specifically being really nice is not necessarily just down to oud itself, at least in its cheaper form. But I think a lot of it is down to the composition and the context that's used in a perfume. So all of the things that are blended together using the oud to create one element of this kind of dark, uh, smoky incense, woody facet, but then other things, probably things like vanilla and other stuff coming together, I think that's what really makes that oud smell that people know from a store. Now, I'm sure that a super high quality wild oud, maybe that's like absolutely mind blowing, but unfortunately I don't have a sample of that, so I can't let you know exactly what that's like. Anyway, moving on, now I've got the five Oud bases. Now these are all by the Big Free Fragrance Company manufacturers. So that's IFF, Feminish, and Givoran. So you know that these are gonna be some of the best in the industry. So I've got one from IFF here called Oud Olifac. I've got one from Givoran called Black Agar Jivko 215. And then I've got three from Feminish. That's Oud Samrat, Oud Malachi, and Oud 010760E. So these are all Oud bases. One thing I will quickly mention is that both the Oud Samrat and Oud Maleki bases by Firminich apparently contain real Oud as part of them. So they're not fully synthetic, they do contain a little bit of real Oud. The Oud Maleki apparently contains 0.2% real Oud and the Oud Samrat contains 1.2% real Oud. So then let's start with the Oud Olifac by IFF. Now this one, I really feel like is almost very in the middle of all these bases. And that's because when you go and smell this initially, it does give you a kind of reasonable impression of oud. It does feel like it's missing something. 
And what I will say is, this is a little bit less kind of leathery than the real oud. It's not got as much sweetness to it either. What it does smell like is more of a generic perfumey smell, something that would blend nicely with other perfume ingredients, something a bit less raw, maybe a bit less raw and natural, and something that's kind of a bit more generic. And I think when you initially smell it, it does smell pretty nice. It's got this kind of woody, animalic incense facets that oud has to it. The only problem with this was I found that if I keep on smelling it, it does seem to lose its character, and then this kind of undersmell, maybe, of more kind of Play-Doh notes kind of comes through, and that's something that I don't really want, necessarily. Um, so for that reason, I feel like this is all right, but it kind of quite quickly falls apart. Um, so if you were gonna use this as an Oud note, then I think it could definitely work, but I also don't think it's the best Oud base that you could use. Secondly, moving on to the Black Agar Jivko. Now, this was actually one of the first Oud bases I got quite a long time ago, um, but I do still think it is my favorite one. Now, when you smell this initially, it does um, do a pretty good job of an Oud smell, and similar to the IOF one, I would say this one isn't necessarily exactly true to the smell of Oud. Actually, this is probably the case for all of these bases. Um, but just because it's not the exact smell of real Oud doesn't mean it's necessarily bad. I actually think the smell that they created that's pretty well based on the smell of Oud for this one is actually really, really nice. This one is like Oud. You've got that woody incense, those woody incense notes, but then it's kind of coupled with a bit more of a spicy peppery note than real Oud. And it's also got these kind of musky notes and they're all really nicely blended together. And when you smell this base, it just smells really, really lovely. And I've used it in a few kind of test perfumes that I've made. And so far I've been having pretty good success with it. Um, so out of all of the Oud bases, potentially this is my favorite one. And it's not too expensive, at least compared to the real Oud or the bases containing real Oud either, which means that you can actually go and make perfumes with this and use it without having to go and make some super expensive perfume that's really inaccessible that no one can actually afford to enjoy. It does have less of the animalic notes, focusing more on the cleaner, um, maybe more kind of nice, let's say, smelling notes. But again, I don't think that's a bad thing because for me, um, I want my perfumes to smell kind of, you know, nice and smooth. I don't necessarily want them to smell too animalic and dirty. I know some people like their perfumes to smell like that. So it is all a bit based on personality. But if you want that kind of commercial oud smell, then I think one of these two oud bases, especially the Black Agar Jivko, is pretty good. Now then, moving on to the Feminish bases. So I'll start off with the Oud 010760E. Now, this one I think is definitely the weakest out of all the Feminish bases, because if you go and smell the other Ouds and then you try to smell this, then you can't actually smell it anymore. You have to kind of smell it first before your nose goes blind to those Oud smells. And this one is the one without any real Oud inside. So smelling this now on the dry down, it's funny because it's actually a little bit sweeter and it reminds me a little bit of Styrax, which is um, that oil, which is quite a sweet, almost a little bit of a honey-like scent. And it's often used in different types of incense as well. When I dipped the scent strip in this originally, it reminded me a lot more of the leathery side of real oud. Um, so it's funny that it's developed basically from leathery to a little bit more sweet. Now I have tried using this in perfume compositions in the past, but the problem again that I found with it is it is quite weak. So it does seem to um, not necessarily really make its presence known in the blends that you make unless you put a lot of it in. So moving on to the other two Ouds. So we've got the Oud Maleki, which is Fermanish's base, which is more expensive than the other one, but this one has some real Oud at 0.2%. So really just a tiny amount inside. Now this base I really don't like very much to be honest. And this is because in this base they really pushed the animalic dirty notes uh, quite far. And to me what this smells like is something like civet mixed with castorium mixed with ambergris bases. It's just got a load of these, well, like barnyard animal kind of, uh, kind of almost like poo like notes. And that's not really something I like too much personally. Again, I said, I know some people like this kind of stuff, so maybe this would be the good Oud base for you. Um, but for me, it just gets a big no. If 
finally we have the Oud Samrat. So this is Ferminish's Oud base with a little bit of a higher concentration of Oud at 1.2%. And this one I was unsure of. Initially I wasn't sure I liked it so much, but the more I've thought about it, I actually think it's pretty decent. And that's because when I smelled this first, I really felt like this just smells quite heavily of cashmeran. I don't know if they've actually gone and used cashmeran in the base, I assume they have. And now it's dried down a bit, it smells a bit more of a super amber or a really strong woody amber, something a bit like Amber Extreme. So maybe they've put that in the base as well. So I was thinking, well, I can already go and get those two synthetics and use them in my own perfumes. But the more I've thought about it, I actually think that it's, despite having used those things, it's actually been blended fairly well. And I do think at all stages, you still do get a bit of a distinctive oud note as opposed to just those things. And I actually think the kind of combination they've made with all of this stuff is quite nice. And because those notes, things like ambers and cashmeran, you're going to be putting in a lot of perfumes or they're very easy to work with notes, they're often used. And also these kind of notes would naturally work quite well with oud anyway. This should really help to bridge the oud into your perfume in a nice way that makes composition a bit easier. It makes it so that your oud is already, let's say, it's, all, it's already kind of been brought into your composition in an easy to use way. So it's more likely that you'll end up with something smelling nice rather than something that's just very kind of raw and unkempt um, if you're looking to make a bit more of a, a balanced perfume. So this Oud, um, I guess my complaint with it would be that it does smell a little bit too much of um, other synthetic aroma chemicals that aren't actually Oud. Um, but at the same time, I think this is a good mechanism almost, or a good vehicle to bring Oud into that kind of perfume. The other problem with those Oud bases, especially the Oud Samrat, is that because they're using that real Oud, it does bump up the price a little bit as well. So then, overall, how would I rank all of these different Ouds, or Oud notes, because most of them aren't even real Oud? Well, it's interesting. If I was going to make kind of a tier list or a ranking list for all of these, Probably in the S tier, the top tier, I would actually leave a placeholder for some real wild oud or some real high quality oud because I haven't got any of those here unfortunately because it's so expensive and I haven't smelled them, but I imagine that because there's so much hype around this stuff and it's so well renowned and so expensive that I'm guessing it's gonna smell pretty good and after all it's the real stuff that all this other stuff is trying to um, kind of get towards. Again, like I said, I don't know the quality level of the oud I've got, but I just didn't feel it was that amazing. So if we go down to the A tier, I would probably actually pretty much put the um, Black Agar Jivko base from Givaudan into that tier. And that's because while it may not have the most authentic, complex, rich, deep oud note in the world, what it does do is essentially give you a way to bring oud or an oud note into your perfume at a cheap price that is really nicely, I think, balanced. It just smells really nice on its own. And because it will be similar, or that note itself will actually be used in a lot of commercial perfumes, it will give you at least a recognizable oud note to most people. Then secondly, after that, going down another tier, well here I'd probably put this real oud that I've got, um, and that's just because I think on its own you need probably need to do a lot of composition to actually bring it to the point where you can fit it really nicely into the perfume. I just think that this particular oud on its own it just doesn't really sing for me. It just doesn't um, it doesn't give the character necessarily that you would expect um, with all the hype around oud. In this level, I would also probably put the Oud Samrat, and that's because, like I said, this base has some real Oud in, it definitely gives you a distinctive kind of Oud note, and it's also, it seems to be balanced in a way with this kind of cashmere-like smell, or these amber-like smells that would slot nicely into most kind of compositions that would naturally use Oud anyway. So I think this is a good way to bring an Oud note into your perfume without necessarily having to have too much uh, compositional skill. You can just kind of slot it in, you've got an Oud note, and you should have a nice perfume not too long after. And then in this tier as well, Maybe I would put the Oud Olifac from IFF because, again, I think it's a pretty decent Oud base, it's just not quite as good as the Black Agar Jivko. 
Then going down one more tier, I would probably put the Oud 010760E, that Firminish base. This one, I felt like it smelled all right, and it did have a kind of leathery smell that was similar to the real Oud, um, but it was just very weak, and overall, it seems to not um, be very easy to use in perfumes. And then finally, and this is just a personal opinion, but I really didn't like that Oud Maleki too much. I just felt that it was just a load of kind of synthetic animalic notes shoved together. I didn't even necessarily particularly think Oud that much. I just kind of thought dirty farmhouse, no, not farmhouse, but more of like a, a dirty barn with poo everywhere, that kind of smell. Um, so it just didn't really do it for me. Um, I would definitely put that at the bottom of my list. But that said, I know that some people like that kind of thing. So if that's you, then maybe this is the one for you. So then that's my guide to Oud Notes in Perfumery. Now this is really aimed at you if you are someone like me and you're learning to be a perfumer or you're learning to make your own perfumes from home, that kind of thing. It's not really aimed at the Oud connoisseurs out there who probably know a lot more about the different grades of real Oud than I do. But if you're just someone making perfumes at home and you're interested in finding an oud note for your perfumes, then you've probably got all of the information you need to know in this video. Now, I am thinking about doing another video where I actually try to go and make an oud perfume or a perfume with an oud note in it. Maybe just some kind of experiments and showing what formulas I try. So if you're interested in that video, then do leave a comment to tell me that you're interested and then I'll know to do that video. Apart from that, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, do consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. That way you'll see more videos just like this that I create every week come up into your subscription feed on YouTube. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. This video is sponsored by Luxeterra, my online store where you can find all of the essential equipment for perfumery. Only good quality and good value for money products make the cut and I use almost all of the products myself when making perfumes for my brand. To browse the full range of products, visit www.lux-terra.co.uk or click the link in the description.